Hey, what is up guys? It is Slick or Slick Buff here. I'm back again with another video. And this one, we're going to be talking about E3 2017, which is only a little over a week away as we record this video. And I say we because I do have a special guest with me. He's been on the channel before, but I'll let him introduce himself to those of you that do not know him already. Hello, True Believers! My name's M. Falarka. I did a previous collaboration with Slick Moth back when PlayStation Experience was going on, back in December of 2016, and I am back again doing another fantastic collaboration with this amazing man about E3, and I cannot wait <laughs> to get started. Well, I don't know about either part of those, amazing or man, but I, uh, I guess I'll take both of those. Um, thank you for the kind words, nonetheless, and uh, like you said, this is our second time doing a collab. And uh, we're going to be talking about E3 this time, speculating primarily about what we're going to see. We do have a scheduled list of what we want to talk about. Um, these are all like in the superhero video game realm of things. And at the very end, we're going to talk about Spider-Man PS4, which is perhaps the biggest item on our list uh, to talk about because that seems like it is the most likely to appear. But we can also talk about a lot of other superhero video games and their potential to appear um, at E3 in 2017. We have about five or six on here. So let's go ahead and jump into the first one. We're going to sort of go from from smallest to biggest in terms of priority and the first one that I wanted to talk about is the Avengers project and and I have it on smallest to largest you know at the least not because it's not important or, or it's not exciting because it very much is so the problem with this game is that they've outright said that it's not going to be at E3 in 2017 and for that reason um, we don't really have too much to get excited about. I mean, I can't say there's not like a 1% chance they couldn't surprise us with like a little teaser. Uh, but in terms of anything substantial for the Avengers project, I wouldn't get um, our hopes up. Definitely agree with you right there, Slick Moth. It was said back in January of 2017 this year when Square Enix and Crystal Dynamics and Marvel revealed the first teaser for the Avengers project. It was just like a little CG teaser showing certain Avengers weapons like Iron Man's Gauntlet and Thor's Hammer and Captain America's Shield. And then in the description of that trailer, which not many people read, it just said that experience this game in full epic fashion in 2018 with more news updates to come. So they already flat out said that we will not expect this game at E3 or even more this year in 2017 because of how Marvel was just announcing their partnership with Square Enix of other games that they're going to be making other than Spider-Man PS4 and tons of other Marvel related games that are coming out. Um, but yeah, we should mainly expect more of this game next year rather than this year. Yeah, this year, I th or excuse me, next year, I do think that uh, we'll definitely be getting something. I mean, this is such just, I mean, they call it a project. It's not even a game. It's literally called a project because it is so expansive. It's unlike anything we've ever seen in terms of scale. Two um, companies are working on it conjointly, and then, um, you know, Square Enix is a massive, a massive game development studio. So it's just going to be unparalleled in scale, and for that reason, we're not going to see it this year. But nonetheless, um, you know, it's something to, to, to mention to, to be on the horizon for next year. So the next thing that we wanted to talk about that Evan knows a little bit more about this than I do, so he'll explain, is Sucker Punch. Now, if you recall, Sucker Punch is the studio that very, at the very beginning of Spider-Man PS4, it was leaked that Sucker Punch, not Insomniac, was going to be developing Spider-Man PS4, which you now know, of course, is not the case. But there is a possibility, evidently, that they could be developing a superhero video game. Exactly, Slick Moth. And this is where it gets really interesting. So... Just like you said, all the way back when Spider-Man PS4 was being teased, Sucker Punch was the main name that everyone was talking about because of their history with the infamous games, because of how those are extremely well and popular superhero games in their whole studio, and that is why everyone was thinking, including myself, that they would be a perfect match for a character like Spider-Man. And they're also a Sony-exclusive studio, which is why the Spider-Man game was teased to be a Sony-exclusive and since Sucker Punch and Sony worked directly together, that's why we thought, oh, they're going to make a Spider-Man. Turns out it's Insomniac who's making it, and Sucker Punch is working on something else. However, the really interesting thing is back when Spider-Man PS4 was being teased, that tweet that we all thought is what we got the signals saying that, oh, it's going to be Sucker Punch. Because of how the tweet said is that there is a new animator who joined their team who's working on an entitled, an untitled Spider-Man PS4 project. But... At the same time, it was also said that Sucker Punch was looking for people to hire for their studio to make an expansive, open-world, exclusive video game for the PlayStation 4 that also has lots of history with the costume design for the character. Now, 
people thought those rumors are debunked since it's Insomniac who's working on Spider-Man and not Sucker Punch. It turns out that those exact statements are still true for Sucker Punch's new game. They are still working on a fully new IP. It's exclusive on the PS4, and they have lots of lots of background information on the character's costume design. Given what we saw with Spider-Man PS4 with a brand new white spider emblem and this crazy looking design suit, that's also apparently still going to be applied with Sucker Punch's game. Now, there have been leaks that say that they are working on a Western game, which is very strange that people think that for some reason Sucker Punch is working on a Western game. There were leaked concept images and leaked uh, inputs about that they are going to make some kind of Western game. Turns out Sucker Punch themselves confirmed that to be false. They said that they are not working on a Western game. And again, it's a new IP, so it's not going to be Sly Cooper 5, sadly, even though I love the Sly Cooper series, or Infamous 4, because again, it's a brand new game. It focuses on the costume design, and we have lots and lots of cool things to hopefully discover from the Spidey Squad's perspective is that we believe it's going to be an Iron Man game. Because again, Marvel said that they're going to meet all these amazingly talented developers, see what characters they could best be equipped with, and mainly given what they uh, what Sucker Punch has done with the Infamous series, specifically in Infamous Second Son, seeing that game be played out, they would be awesome for an Iron Man game. So, Hands down. Yeah, so two things to take away from that. First of all, I do find it interesting that Sucker Punch outright debunked the rumor about the Western game, but completely ignored, I'm sure people have been tweeting them about the fact of the new IP, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They have not debunked that part of it. Moreover, it would be, in my estimation, um, even more disastrous for the Xbox One. And I, I own both consoles, I'm a fan of both, and I, I certainly don't want this game to be, you know, let's say it is an Iron Man game, to be exclusive only to the PS4. Um, but, you know, the truth of it is it would be disastrous for the Xbox One if not only Spider-Man PS4, but also an Iron Man, a AAA Iron Man game was to only be on the PS4. Um, you know, superheroes is a big thing these days, and, uh, you know, it'd be really unfortunate for that console. And also, I would argue, for the video game industry as a whole, um, for, you know, P Iron Man and Spider-Man to only be on PS4, because then what's next? You know, an Xbox that, or exclusive Batman game, or, you know, whatever. I, I just think that is a slippery slope. Um, it, it is just something to look out for, though, if those rumors happen to be true for the Sucker Punch game. Definitely. And there's tons of other options. They could be working on... Who knows? They could even be working on a DC game. We have no idea. But the fact that they, you know, are looking for some kind of people that focus on the character's costume design, and it's exclusive on the PS4, and it's weird because Sony owns the rights to Marvel. That's why they gave it uh, to... Or Sony owns the rights to Spider-Man, not Marvel. Right, right, That's right. why they gave the rights to Insomniac to make Spider-Man, and that is the only Marvel character that Sony directly owns. Iron Man is with Disney, since we're with all their movies and stuff. That's so it would be really strange if Sony somehow got the hands to make a exclusive Iron Man game. Not a multi-platform Iron Man game, but an exclusive Iron Man game at that. And it's also even stranger, because we have the Avengers Project. And we saw in there that they have Iron Man in there, clearly, as an Avenger in the Avengers Project. Right. And also, strangely enough, is that Marvel and Square Enix have this deal of more than one marvel related game and even though we already have the guardians of the galaxy telltale series it's also said that square enix and marvel are also going to be making a guardians of the galaxy game that's triple a yes that is yeah i've heard that too so there's lots of different uh characters that we can try and choose from that would be directly equipped for sucker punch um but we just and have you to know wait what? and see until e3 you know what that i just thought about that that, that guardians of the galaxy triple a game is very possible it could be at e3 as well I think definitely. that I think that it's early in development, no doubt about it. I definitely don't see it coming out this year. Um, but with that being said, though, I mean, with the release of the film, I think it's entirely possible we could see, um, a, you know, a CGI trailer at E3. So that's something to keep a lookout for as well. Um, hopefully, not an exclusive to any console. Uh, but that's something that we could maybe see. Absolutely, yeah. Anything is possible at this point in terms of superhero games. I mean, I freaked out last year when they showed Batman Arkham VR. So who knows what type of superhero-related surprises E3 has in store for us this yeah, year. Yeah, I freaked out at that too, but because I thought it was not uh, just a VR game, like a 40-minute VR game, I thought it was like a new Batman game, like a real right. game. That's why I freaked out. Uh, but anyway, 
that's the, you know, I, I'm over it now. I'm over it. Now. Definitely. <laughs> okay. So let's talk now about Rocksteady and what they might be cooking up. And you know, with Superman in particular, we did we do see that little tease from Rocksteady. If for those of you who aren't aware, they sent Rocksteady sent a cake to um to NetherRealm Studios, who is the creator of Injustice. Uh, and it was not a Batman cake. It was a Superman cake, and it said congratulations and that sort of thing. And, and that you know, Rocksteady likes to tease people. They're a strong. They're they're a very small studio, relatively speaking. So they take maybe a little longer to make some games, uh, but they're very high quality. I mean, it, it's just insane. And I still do believe today that, um, you know, the Arkham games are the best superhero video games ever made. And I think that they can really knock it out of the park with the Superman game, assuming that that's what they're doing. Even though the challenge would be paramount, it would be, you know, insanely hard to develop that game. But I do feel that that it's possible. And as for Rocksteady Superman, um, you know, we got to look at Rocksteady's last game came out in um, June of 2015. Uh, we're now we're now two years after that. I think that there's a chance that we could see a CGI trailer for the game. I mean, it's two years after they've been working on the game um, since Arkham Knight came out. I'm only sure that you, you know. I would assume that. I can only assume that that would be the case. Uh, we can't be sure, is what I mean to say. And with that being said, I do feel that it's a possibility that we could get a reveal, an official reveal, only a CGI, not no gameplay. It's too early for that, especially if it is Superman. That game's going to take a little bit to make. Um, but that's something to look out for. I, I think it's something that's not on people's radar at all, but is a, a serious possibility, albeit one that you know I'm not banking on, but is one that is, again, a possibility. Absolutely agree with you, Slick Moth. And it's really interesting, too, because of how Rocksteady's send-off to Batman in the Arkham series with Arkham Knight was astounding. If you guys don't know, Arkham Knight is my favorite Batman Arkham game. I just thought they'd knocked it out of the park with that game. And also, there were a couple Easter eggs in regards to Superman in the Arkham game. Now, That's true. Uh, we don't know for sure. Uh, if they do make a Superman game, we don't know if it's going to be set in the same universe as the Arkham games. I think that would be awesome if it was. But if they do make a Superman game, I think, given what they did with Batman, with three games that they made, you know, excluding Arkham Origins, since that was Warner Brothers Montreal, um, they would also really nail Superman as a character with his personality and just how heroic Superman can be. Because in the Injustice games, they take that universe where Superman is a, is a villain, he's a, a bad guy. And with this ending story of Injustice 2, if you choose the Superman ending, because you can do a ending as Batman or ending as Superman, I won't spoil it for you guys, but the ending as Superman is something I never expected the character of Superman to do in a video game and if rocksteady does the opposite of that where they just have what superman is all meant to be about hope hope heroism just pride and just saving people one day at a time if they do that character justice which i'm sure they will if they make a superman game which i really hope they do it would be almost i think game of the year quality given what they did with arkham knight seeing how they took Every aspect of Batman, from Batman himself, from his gadgets with the Batmobile, with his side characters, with all the characters that you can interact with, with his villains. If they give that same treatment to Superman, especially with them teasing the, uh, that whole Superman-related cake to NetherRealm Studios, I just think that they are going to do a fantastic job. I mean, Rocksteady's strength really is in their their passion. I mean, they're very, very passionate, and they have a strong affinity for the character of Batman. I think that's very clear. Uh, and not only that, but I think also Superman and DC characters and the DC lore and stuff like that. And I, I think that they just – they really care about these characters, and that really is the building block to building a good game. I mean, if you don't have any connection to the characters, it's, t it's really tough to, you know – to synthetically create that compassion, you know what I mean? And and I feel that there is a similar affinity for the character of Spider-Man with Insomniac Games, but especially with Rocksteady. I mean, that was just their dream to make Batman games, and they've said in the past that their dream game is a Superman game, and I, I really feel that there's a strong possibility that not only that they're making the game, but also that we could actually see it and, and be officially announced at E3, but not any more than that. But that's not to say we can't still get excited for it, even if it is just a CGI uh, reveal. So, anything oh, else definitely. to add for the uh, the Rock City Superman? I would just be happy as a clam if they oh, do yeah. announce that at E3. I mean, like with PlayStation Experience, we got Last of Us, and even though that's not a superhero game, but people went berserk for just a game like The Last of Us, which is, uh, you know, to put it bluntly, is a zombie-related game. And even though it's way more than that, and it's such an, an gripping story. 
Imagining the same thing with a character like Superman, with a studio like Rocksteady, and with a platform, or platforms, with PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, just with the next-gen platforms in general, it would be a win-win scenario for everybody. And it would just be a dream come true for hardcore Superman fans and DC fans all around. Yeah, I, I, I really... I really can't wait. I'm very, very excited for the for the prospect of that. I, again, I'm not getting my hopes up at all, but I will say that that um, I'll be keeping my eye out for it, and I think that we all should for Rocksteady at um, E3 2017. Totally. So let's move on now. We're down to our bottom two. So we, we're down to Batman and Spider-Man. So let's talk first about Batman. Let's talk about um, Damian Wayne's Batman video game that is that has been leaked very extensively over the past year, uh, being in development right now at WB Games Montreal. Jason Schreier of Kotaku has recently come out, as many of you know, and has said that the game has been rebooted, and it may not actually involve Damian Wayne. Um, it, it's just been relaunched. And before, we had a, a strong suspicion the game was going to be at E3 and was going to be revealed then. Um, now we're not so sure. So I happen to be in the camp that, again, um, sort of the same thing with Superman. I, I think it's a possibility, but I wouldn't get my hopes up for it for the simple reason that the game may have been rebooted. And even if it has, I have said in the past that, you know, in regards to, um, having a, a Batman video game that you don't really have to, you know, the game can only be in development for a few months and you can have a CGI trailer. And that is certainly the case with, with this game as well. So even if they just rebooted the game, say, two or three months ago, it may be a while away from coming out, but that's not to say that we couldn't see a, a little reveal or announcement because it's it's been a very, very long time, a long wait for us Batman fans, um, you know, for, for this game or for any Batman game, as a matter of fact, especially because it's sort of been dangling in front of us and we had an idea was happening, but it's just been, it's just been a waiting game at this point and nothing's really come of it. Um, so my thoughts on it, again, is that it's a possibility. I would say it's mm. less than 50% um, in my personal estimation. But other than that, you know, um, it, it's possible. Oh, I totally agree with you, Slick Moth. I mean, back when, uh, you know, of the gaming events like GDC and also DICE were going around, that was when we were thinking back with that whole um, announcement that, oh, we were going to get some reveal of the Demon Wayne Batman game. And then it turns out, oh, psych, it's Shadow of War, the new Lord of the Rings game. So... They, you know, Warner Brothers Montreal, they keep on hinting specifically that in some contexts, a Batman game exists. They cannot deny that anymore, that this game is real. And if they want to actually calm us hardcore Batman fans and DC fans with this game, at least mentioning it at E3 would be a likely possibility. And again, E3 is where dreams sometimes come true. Huh. I mean, I know for a sometimes. fact when... Definitely sometimes. I mean, my dream definitely went out the window when Spider-Man PS4 was announced that it was made by Insomniac, and I just lost all my trains of thought there when that game was announced, and I couldn't even think straight for a whole pretty much month, more than months for a year because my YouTube channel. But with this game, Damian Wayne Batman, like you said, the last Batman game we got was in June of 2015 with Roxanne's Arkham Knight, and then specifically with Wonder Brothers Montreal's games with Arkham Origins, that was in 2013. Four uh, years February. ago. Yeah, so it's been quite a while since they've ever done anything. I mean, that was their last game, pretty much, that they fully worked on, specifically their last Batman game. And again, all the teases, all the winks and nodges that we've got from them indicates, and their behind-the-scenes footage of them working on it, on their computers, seeing kind of like what uh, Gotham may look like and seeing what uh, Batman kind of looks like in the little developer screenshots that we got there from the uh, leaked behind-the-scenes footage. This exists for sure. And again, E3 is where big announcements come true, specifically with a game like this that's been so quiet for so long, with a studio that's been so quiet for so long, more than four years, it, it's just, it's time. It's time that they at least yep. mention something or at least mention what they're working on, not even showing anything, but at least say we're back and we're back with something cool. <laughs> yeah, it, it is almost like WB Montreal forgets that they have fans or like that people care about them. It's kind of like they exactly. just, they're just like nobody, nobody's looking into what we're doing. But I mean, if you look at yeah. social media, people are very curious as to what the studio is doing. And no people's favorite Batman game is not Arkham Origins, but that doesn't mean that people don't care what they're working on or that people aren't excited for, you know, whatever they're working on. Like I said, so again, a studio like, like, um, Rocksteady or, or any studio like that could never get away with the level of silence that they, that they've had. Um, 
but with that being said, they can get away with it because they are just like a like a corporate studio, WB, you know, Montreal um, sort of situation. But again, they do have to keep in mind they they are not just a studio that's just developing mobile games or whatever. Well, actually, they have done mobile games. That's kind of <laughs> sad to think about Legends of Chima or some crap. I don't know. <laughs> right. But you know, the, the I mean, let's face it. The last real thing they did was the Batgirl DLC, and that doesn't count. It's a forty-minute DLC expansion. Um, and it, it, like you said, it, it's time. So I'm hoping that we're going to see it Absolutely. at E3. What, what's your if you have to place a percentage possibility for this, what what, what will you say? And we'll, we'll do the same for Spider-Man PS4, even though I think I already totally. know the answer. Totally, yep. And I mean, people love Batman. Batman is, if not the most popular superhero or DC superhero of all time. And again, people, some people actually did like Arkham Origins. I mean, I, obviously, like I said, Arkham Knight's my favorite Arkham game, but I really loved Arkham Origins. I did all the modes. Like, there were, like, three different modes you could do, like, New Game, New Game Plus, and Nightmare Mode. I did all of those modes. I love that game. The story, specifically, what they did with the Joker telling the um, the killing joke type of story with the Joker in that game was fantastic. And even, yeah, with their Batgirl DLC mm-hmm. in Arkham Knight, I, I actually forgot that they made that DLC because it was so long ago and I actually forgot that they actually made it. But yeah, that DLC was a great story. And yeah, it's not a full game that they made, but seeing how their caliber was on a, like a next gen platform, like PlayStation and Xbox with that game and that story that they told, told with Batgirl and seeing how their own full individual project, like this new Batman game would be played if it's Damian Wayne, which I know for a fact it will be my percentage Given that it's been enough time, we've waited long enough, the teasing's been nonstop, I think I would say above 80% that it's going to be there. Maybe 85% that it's going to wow. actually be shown. Like, I don't know, a gameplay demo, maybe like another CG trailer. Like, we always get the Batman Arkham CG trailers, which are awesome. Um, but if they show a CG trailer and then follow it up with gameplay, that might be a little bit lower, like maybe 60%. But I think at least for a CG trailer, a solid 85% would do it for me. See, you know, I would have said the same thing if it wasn't for these rumors now that the game's been rebooted. Now I'm not so sure. Uh, but I'm really, really hoping you're right. Uh, it's tough to place a percentage on it again because, I, I, you know, Jason Schreier's kind of reliable in some ways. Um, right. We'll just have to see. We'll have to see. Uh, Absolutely. I'm very hopeful. So now let's move on to the game that we, we've all been waiting for. And we really do want to see it at E3. We really, really need to see it at E3. Whew. Spider-Man PS4 developed by Insomniac Games. Um, oh I'll, I'll let you start it. This is your baby, so I'll let you start I mean, it. yeah, like... Thank you, Slickmaw, for giving yeah. me yeah, yeah, yeah. the reins on this. Yeah. I mean, we've been just through a crapshoot with this game. Like, we <laughs> got announced E3 2016. <laughs> an awesome trailer. Fantastic. All in engine gameplay stuff. Fantastic showcase. Awesome. Then we waited three months in September when we got a 30 second clip of the game running in 4K on the PS4 Pro. That technically does not count for a marketing standpoint for the game. That counts as PlayStation, showing, oh, this is what our games are going to look like on our new console. So, like, we have Spider-Man and Days Gone and Mass Effect. These are all games you can expect on our hardcore console if you buy a PS4 Pro. And it looked great. Then, in November, we got a little 30-second clip ad of PlayStation as a whole with their company showing games that are coming to the PlayStation 4, and one of them was Spider-Man. And it showed a little live-action CG scene of him just fighting some of the henchmen in the game, and it looked great. Ever since then, nothing. We all speculated it was going to be at PSX. We all thought it was going to be there. And the really weird and irritating thing that happened is that three days before that actual conference happened at PSX, Insomniac then went on Twitter saying, Sorry, everybody. We're not going to be at PlayStation Experience or the Video Game Awards, but we do have more cool stuff to share in 2017. Mm-hmm. It's literally, e- it's almost E3. It's June. It's packed. ever it's, since then. Yeah, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Even on Twitter, they just show fan art. They just say we're working on it every day. No release dates been announced. That's why everyone's starting to really lose faith and lose hope and lose excitement. And also, everyone's saying, okay, it's not going to come out until 2019. People don't wow, even think it's going to be coming no. out in 2018. They think it's going to no. actually come out in 2019, which is flat out ridiculous. No. Um, you know, I have been back and forth in my mind is it 2017 is it 2018 i don't know but those leaked playstation magazines which are official by the way say from the uk they say that other games including spider-man ps4 that are playstation exclusives are coming out in 2017 however 
The weird thing is, is that the God of War game made by Sony Santa Monica, that was just confirmed recently to be coming out in 2018. Also, not a PS4 exclusive, but a really uh, exciting game overall, is Red Dead Redemption 2. That was said to be coming out fall 2017. Now it's said to be coming out spring 2018. So that this whole thing with these new games being announced with confirmed dates and then just switching them, but specifically with Spider-Man PS4, showing a game and then not telling about it ever since with a character like Spider-Man. You know, there are games that are exceptions, like um, the new Final Fantasy game that's getting remade, the seventh one. That's a big game on everyone's list. It was made from the PlayStation 1 to the PlayStation 4 from the ground up. That takes a lot of time, which I totally understand a game like that. Same thing with Kingdom Hearts 3. That was shown a bit too early, and, you know, we've had nothing from that since. But but a game like that where it's a fully next-generation Kingdom Hearts game, that takes a lot of time to do. This, too, you know, a new... IP for Insomniac. They've never really done anything like this. They've The last free roaming game they made was Sunset Overdrive, and even that didn't really do or sell well for the Xbox One. It got okay reviews, but uh, for the selling market, it didn't really do really well. So a game like this with Spider-Man, it is essential that they do this game with respect. And I know for a fact they will, because again, at Insomniac, while they're being super quiet about it, they keep saying, we love this character, we're working every day on it. We're working overtime on it, pretty much. And they just are giving this game the total Sony AAA treatment that this game absolutely deserves. Because, again, we've had Spider-Man games from movies. We've had original Spider-Man games that are really cool that aren't free roam, like uh, Shared Dimensions is a good example. Um, but with a game like this, this is something that you have to take in mind, too, is that have you ever seen a Spider-Man game, a Spider-Man game, not a superhero game, but specifically a Spider-Man game, be announced at E3, show the game, and then not have anything else be shown of it since. Even the developers are being super quiet. They're not even showing behind the scenes. They're not even saying, oh, it's going really well. They're not even teasing, like, oh, yeah, you can crawl up walls. They're not even saying anything like that. They're being super tight-lipped about everything, absolutely everything about this game because they know that when they show it again at E3, because even though Insomniac has not said that they are going to E3, if they are not at E3, a lot of Spider-Man fans are going to be really upset with them. Specifically now, recently, with this new um, Spider-Man cartoon that got a trailer, even though it doesn't really relate to the game. But this whole cartoon just has a lot of people hating on Marvel right now. And then Homecoming looks pretty good, but me, I have a couple concerns with Homecoming. Um, but that movie looks really good. But this game is the essential standpoint, hit home run, marketing, gold awesomeness that marvel and sony both need for this character showing that trailer showing that dialogue that yuri lowenthal the voice actor that's voicing spider-man in this game people see me and they think they're safer but it's not really me they're seeing this whole dialogue that he's saying and this whole game that they showed at e3 2016 just proves that this is going to be a masterpiece if not a once in a lifetime experience for spider-man as a whole yeah i mean yeah, <laughs> it, it, that's tough to follow up, Evan. I got to give you that. Okay, yeah, exactly. let me let me first give you my thoughts on on seeing this game at E3. I do feel that we can that that not only can we see it at E3, I think that we will see the game at E3. I mean, I would I would be surprised if the game was not at E3. And moreover, in regards to what your your comments about the release, I feel. Um, quite strongly that the game will either come out in, in 2017, which I think is possible, but if not 2017, then I can see a spring 2018, but, but I certainly don't see a late 2018, um, you know, release for this game. I mean, especially because, again, they have been quiet on it for so long, and people do forget that the first trailer that we saw, it was in-game, in-game in gameplay, so the game was playable well over a year ago, and, and for that reason, I would be particularly surprised if the game was not, um, you know, ready by, by spring 2018, and I, and I think that will be. In regards to, to E3, I, I feel that, um, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna be seeing some gameplay of this game, you know, and, and not in a, in a trailer cut sort of way, I think that we are going to see a gameplay demo for the game, and and this is exactly what we said at PSX. So who knows? Yeah. But, but but then again, you know, in in our PSX discussion, the day after we recorded that, maybe two days, I don't remember. Um, they did come out and say we don't have anything for PSX, but we do have plans for 2017. So here we are, 2017. Six months have gone by. 
And, um, you know, I think we're in store for, for a pleasant surprise here for, for E3, um, you know, this year. And, and for that reason, I think that we have a lot to be excited about for the prospects of the game coming out in 2017. I don't know. I just really thought with this game, when it was announced a long time ago, I thought that they were going to try to pin it right up next to um, to this new Spider-Man film, Spider-Man Homecoming, of course, which comes out on July 21st, I'm pretty sure. Um, 7th. July 7th, thank you. July 7th. Yep. Uh, it's probably July 21st freaking in the U.S. because the way yeah. Disney does it, they release it like a, two weeks early in the U.K. Anyway, so July 7th, um, I thought they were going to pin it somewhere around there, but it's becoming very apparent that that's not going to be um, the case. Although that would be that would be a big shocker if they if they come out at E3 and say, oh, yeah, the game comes out next month, by the way. That would, I would uh, literally have you would faint, you would and faint. then pass out for hype <laughs> if that happened. And who knows, really, like, for, every, for all know, your fans, do it. for every, like, who, this is literally a dream conference. I mean, last year, we got Spider-Man, we got God of War, we got Days Gone, we got Detroit no, Become this, Human, this, this and we got... This year's gonna be so much better. This year's gonna be yeah, way Yeah, like, better. we, oh my god, let's specifically talk about Sony's conference Sony, here, because, yeah. you know, Microsoft does what they do, and Nintendo, yeah, they got Nintendo and all those no, uh, characters Nintendo. like Mario and all that, but Sony is a god when it comes to E3. Like, they... Just knock it out of the park every year. Last year got me so hyped with that uh, orchestra that they had, and then mm. all of a sudden, I thought, okay, we're co- the conference is done. We got, um, you know, we got Days Gone, we got Detroit Become Human, we got this Lego Star Wars game, we got Hideo Kojima's Norman Reedus game, Death Stranding. Norman That's Reedus crazy. game. <laughs> um, <laughs> and all of a sudden, That's what it's it like, is. all right, it is definitely Norman Reedus and Mads Mikkelsen as a game, which is crazy. And it's like, okay, we're done. Bam. Did we mention we have Sprickin' Spider-Man by Insomniac? So this is, like, again, a huge, huge thing for Sony. This is, like, you know, they've wanted Spider-Man in their pocket ever since uh, the Tobey Maguire movies in 2002. And then they have Spider-Man now with the Avengers. And now they have this new cartoon. And then they have this new comic series. But this was Sony specifically. With Sony, this is their child. This is their money-making million-dollar baby right here with this game you know of course it's not going to make like a billion dollars but it's it's still going to sell extremely well and like again sadly some fans are going to be really upset and they're sad also sadly their reactions are going to be a bit monotone with the way that how we've had nothing from this game since its announcement and when we see more of the game which i know for a fact is going to knock me right out of my seat but i know for a fact sadly some people are going to be reacting like oh that's a spider-man game okay so they're going to be kind of reacting not as excited as they first were. They're just going to be a bit irritated, and it's like, okay, I'll buy this game, sure. But Sony, for sure, has to update their fans in some way. Same with Insomniac, have to update us, who have been waiting for so long, talking about this game, trying to keep the excitement alive for this game's <laughs> progress and development. For all of us you know, here at the Spy Squad and just amazing individuals like Slick Moff just making videos on this game and trying to inform you viewers and trying to inform us ourselves, trying to keep updated with the status of this game. So Sony has to give it to us right back and just say, you know what, here it is. Gameplay demo, hopefully a release date, because that's what everyone wants to know. Is it 2017? Is it 2018? Who knows? But hopefully Sony will officially confirm all that Spider-Man PS4 goodness at E3. Which of you guys didn't know, Sony's conference starts on June 12th at 5 p.m. Pacific time and 8 p.m. Eastern time. So set your clocks for that date and get ready for some awesome Sony epicness. Yeah, it's going to be great. Um, What day did you say it is again? June 12th. June 12th. So that's early. It's June 12th to the 14th, E3. So that's the very first day of E3, which the conferences always are, in case you're unaware. Yep. June 12th, as we record this, it is June 3rd, the day after Wonder Woman has come out. So 10 days after the release of Wonder Woman. Nine days away now, as I said at the beginning of the video. Just (sighs) a little bit over a week is all we have to wait um, you know, we're not going to, don't expect anything from now, um, till then there's not going to be anything. Yep. They go radio silent. They just pretend like nothing, you know, they try to be all inconspicuous and such. And then June 12th comes and then bam, they just drop it all on you. So it is going to be West coast. You're going to want to set your alarms, um, you know, early, depending on where you live, um, in England, you know, you should be fine everything like that. But, um, I know for me, it's going to be, I think, 10 a.m., you said. So would that be 1 Eastern yep. Standard Time? Okay, I'll be fine. Pretty sure, yeah, because I know for a fact I'm going to be watching this live. So I oh, know yeah. for a fact that i got to set my clock five days early so I get there on time to watch it live. Yeah, and um, I might record a reaction. I'm sure that you will, especially when oh, the same here. PS4 stuff comes on. So. 
Yeah, yep. I'm excited. I'm excited. I think it's it's gonna be great, and uh, we just really gotta gotta keep our eyes eyes open and um, see what they've got cooking. And um, you know, again, of all the things that we've talked about thus far in this video, Spider-Man PS4 is the thing I'm the most sure we're gonna get. I mean, we are gonna get something for yep. this game at E3. Absolutely. I mean, I unequivocally. Have no doubt in my mind. Unequivocally, we will see something. Um, I would be utterly shocked if we don't see and, and devastated if we I don't see something little for the game. Piece either. of me would like die if <laughs> I did not get this game at E three. <laughs> no, we will. It, we we will. I mean, it's going to be there. yes, no doubt about absolutely. it. Absolutely, it will. Um, you know, whether it's playable or what to what degree. Um, I mean, yep. all I know is that uh, we are going to see something just for sure. Definitely, couldn't agree more. So, Evan, thank you very much for coming on. Once again, had a lot of fun recording this video, just like the last one. Unfortunately, our, our PSX predictions for Spider-Man PS4 were a dud, but uh, hopefully this time around, I have a pretty good feeling about this one. So I do too, Slick Moth, and thank you so much for having me. Again, it was a total joy just to be able to sit and talk with you about this amazing conference and all these amazing superhero-related titles that are just going to blow the video game world out of the water. Absolutely, man. And once again, for everybody listening, if you liked what Evan had to say. If you're into Spider-Man PS4 especially, check out his channel in the description below. I'll have it linked. You can go subscribe to him and stay up uh, to the latest and greatest Spider-Man PS4 news. This is Slickmoff signing off. Evan, once again, take it away. Thank you so much for watching, True Believers. Stay spectacular as always. Make sure to go subscribe to Slickmoff, please, for all amazing, awesome content. And thank you so much for watching. See you guys in the next one.